The next item deals with a purchase agreement for Tract A inside the um, Peekaboo development that you were just discussing. Um, the city's reason to um, purchase this is part of the well 10 and the five booster stations, five new booster stations, judicial confirmation of 2014 um, envisioned the city developing a booster uh, station in that area. This development kind of provided a great spot to put in a new pumping or booster station and one of the lots near Orchard Avenue um, seemed to like it would work well. So the city negotiated a price for a lot in that area with the developers. Um, the lot is not a full-size lot because the city didn't need a full-size lot. If it would have been a full-size lot, um, the lot would, could probably sell for more than what the city is going to pay. I think the fair market value of the lot as not being developable was 24000 But the city negotiated with the, um, the developers um, to get to a more accurate fair price for the property in that area because if they would just enlarge that lot that we want to buy, they'd be able to sell it for substantially more. And so the amount of 64000 is what the city agreed and negotiated with the developers and think that that's a fair price for that uh, particular lot. There was a question concerning the square foot value um, at the committee meeting. Number. And I think Walter brought that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the information that I got is that there's going to be a couple different size lots in this development. The larger lots, usually over 22,000 square feet, um, are going to go around 95,000. That would come down to $4.18. The smaller lots would be a little over 11,000, um, go around 75,000. That would come down to $6.67. Um, $6.67. And then for this particular lot that we negotiated is 8,500. And for a price of 64000 that comes down to $7.50 a square foot. Um, Rod, I'm going to try to get you to go back in what you just said about two-thirds of the way. There was a $24,000 number you mentioned. I think when we first help, negotiated. Help, help, I, I didn't get the context. Um, that was the fair market value for the, the lot that we wanted that would not be buildable. So if they were tried to sell it and it wouldn't be buildable because it would be too small. Is that the same lot as the one we're buying? Yes. So help me here. If, if it's 24000 fair market, why are we paying sixty four? Because it's their property. They could have moved the lot line over 20 feet and got a full-size lot, and we could be paying 75000 But we didn't really need. Let me interrupt okay. you. Are they not backed up against a piece of property that's owned by someone else and not, not part of their development? Mm -hmm. I, th I think that um, property does border that. The, yes. the south boundary of this parcel does uh, abut a, a neighboring property. So how, how would they have enlarged the lot under discussion? Move it they east. Can't go, they can't go to the west. That's Orchard Avenue. They can't go south. That's somebody else's land. They could have only gone east. East. east and that creates a very peculiar shape lot that I'm not sure would be worth 24000 Yeah, Yeah, it, it, it could be done. Uh, that was one of the things we looked at in, in assessing the value of the property uh, was an adjustment of that property line to the east would make it a large enough lot to be buildable, which then makes it a marketable lot at anywhere, you know, depending on, on – what pricing you're looking at and, and discussions with the developer uh, anywhere from seventy five to ninety five thousand dollars depending on what range you want to want to consider so is it an odd shaped lot certainly uh, to a certain extent although it's fairly deep north to south um, and it does uh, create a little bit of a hook to the southeast if you will but certainly it is but there was potential for the developer but for the city's project to make a buildable lot there um, that potentially has a higher market value than as appraised. Sure. I, I want to buy the lot. I want to put a booster station on it. I'm, I'm on board with that. The market value of $24,000 is, is a surprise to me. I don't think we've heard that before. I mean, if you extend 
And I'm looking at, I've got the advantage, I guess, of, of the, you've got it in your minds, I've got it in front of me in a picture. Um, if you extend the east property line of this to the east, you're going to create a reverse L-shaped lot that with setbacks, I'm not sure how you put a house on it, much less consider it a $75,000 lot. I, I understand the theoretical, if it's, too small, you make it bigger, therefore it's a more buildable, sellable lot. But the, but the configuration of this one, I don't think meets that criteria. Mike, could you comment on setbacks and... It, Mike, can you put that, that lot up on the screen, please? And Yeah, so this is the lot we're discussing here. You know, you'd have to shift this lot line. No, uh, mark out the outlines, please, of the lot we're talking about, that one. Okay. We're talking about this one here. Okay, yeah, and, that, have to shift and, and Orchard is Orchard's right here. To the, le to the west. Yep. Another owner is to the south. Therefore, those yep. two lines cannot move. Yeah, this is the Anderson property. The, uh, let me, if I may, the street is to the north, and if you move the street further north, you're going to do away with that piece of uh, sellable lot north of that, so you can't move the street. That means you can only go east in the way I'm looking at it. Therefore. Yeah, you would just need to pivot this uh, point right here, so it would shift this line that runs north-south. Uh, it'd be at this northeastern angle, so if you shifted this line, you could pick up enough square footage. We had taken a look at it in order to make uh, a developable lot, which is 9,600 square feet. Uh, so it, it, you know, it, it would have this slight adjustment that would be a little odd, but you'd still be able to, to fit a reasonably sized house uh, with 25 foot front yard setback uh, on all these lots. You would probably have to orient the house facing Orchard Avenue if you were to develop uh, Tract A as a, as a lot, but it could be done, certainly. Um, if I may. Uh, Unless Bill had something but, to jump in on. Bill, I'm looking at you. Comment? It'd be fairly easy. I mean, we, we looked at a modification to that lot boundary to make it a 9,600-square-foot lot, and if you did take that angle and, and uh, rotated it to the northeast and came off radial off the right-of-way boundary, you could very easily get a 9,600-square-foot 9, 9, lot out of that property. The, the adjacent lot would be very much like any other lot that has a, a curved linear frontage either on a cul-de-sac or on a curve of a road where they all tend to have a bit of a pie shape where they have a narrower frontage and then they flare out as they get back to the building a footprint and it's a very large lot adjacent to the east that, that certainly could accommodate a home even with that small minor adjustment to the frontage and so there's there's no reason why that could not be modified to be a buildable lot and if you were even if you were to orient the home to landing lane you would have to go with a fairly shallow depth of a footprint but you have quite a, a good east-west length uh, so you're probably in that 28 to 32 feet of building depth that you could accommodate with the front and rear yard setbacks on that lot but it certainly is buildable it's not I mean it's that's 8,500 square feet and we have a large number of lots in other subdivisions now the majority of the lots here are larger but if you look at Indian Hill 6, Southgate 3rd, any of those we have a number of lots that are 7,000 square feet or less um, that are certainly billable underneath the code and underneath the current setback so it, it could be accommodated i think if you were look at the appraisal that achieved the the twenty four thousand dollar value that was a land assemblage appraisal it looked at the adjacent per square foot valuation of that property adjacent to the south and took its land value on a per square foot basis and essentially applied that to that parcel and that is a, a dramatically different valuation than a buildable property that's that's eligible for a building permit and so those are two drastically different valuation methods. Uh, I think if the appraiser had been asked to evaluate the value of that lot, if the, with that lot line adjustment, you would achieve at a value very, very similar to what's being proposed this evening. All right, all right. I, I think my problem, therefore, is the $24,000 number because your explanation of making it a buildable lot makes a lot of sense. It, it's the 24000 number that... I just, just don't, the, I just don't want to be 
in the paper tomorrow saying the city bought a $24,000 lot for a bargain price of $64,000 last night. And that appraisal was conducted with the assumption that it was not a buildable lot and that, you know, did not look at the possibility of adjusting that boundary to get it to a, a buildable parcel. If it did, you would see a much different value because a number of lots that are in that seven to 8,500 square foot range, depending upon location, depending upon view, uh, will range anywhere from 60,000 to 80,000 in the market within the community. Uh, it is a different lot than what's present in the majority of that development, but that is the going market rate. And as you get smaller, residential lots approach the eight to nine dollars per square foot range. So somewhere in seven, a little over seven dollars a square foot, isn't extraordinary in this market. Anybody else? Have we? Have we made it clear why we're going to pay $64,000 for this lot? Have we justified this? I think the, so. Uh, so. If I may. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gary yeah, and then John. I think you also need to consider not, that this is, it was raw land. That's the appraisal. That it was unimproved. This isn't like parkland dedication, which is a requirement of our code, where we require developers to put the frontage on those uh, parkland. This is the city buying a lot for a booster station that is not intended to serve this subdivision, so we are a property purchaser like anybody else. So if that property were developed with the frontage, then we would have had to pay for our percentage just like any lot owner in that subdivision. So it was undeveloped lot price. So that um, after discussions, the appraisal did not accurately reflect what the lot was worth. And in the end analysis, the developer said he would not take $24,000 for that lot. So as a purchaser, if we wanted the lot, we needed to at least pay a reasonable price. That's what we believe that we negotiated. And, and we're getting a lot with frontage. Yes, sir. Curb gutter sidewalk straight. Same as in the rest of the city. Okay. okay. I'm going to make my first motion. Excellent. I would like to move to approve the purchase of Tract A in Peekaboo Estate subdivision for the purpose of building a booster station. Second. I'll, I'll second that. You got beat. Catherine okay, was quick ahead. on the gun. Okay. Uh, Walter, starting with you. Aye. 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 Uh, and that one carries two.